Hello again, welcome back to another day, another week of daily Bible study. We're continuing on with the book of Acts. We're going to start uh, chapter 12 today. Before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, in one of these uh, strange stories in the book of Acts, we see you at work. And we are reminded once again that, uh, that these early Christians uh, were not naive people. They were not prepared to swallow just any old story that they heard as if they were easily gullible and easily convinced of every little foolish thing. Uh, Lord, they're really very much like us in so many ways. Lord, help us to have the wisdom to see you at work, uh, and Lord, to expect you to do surprising things. Lord, we ask you to be with us during this time, for we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, looking at this uh, week's Bible studies, I was realizing that there's that part of the reason why I think I've been hesitant to really do a lot of work in Acts in public is that uh, the passages are either extremely long or extremely short. So this is kind of a long one, but let's look at this together. It's about Peter's arrest. Um, this is what we read. Now, about that time, Herod the king laid hands on some who belonged to the church in order to mistreat them. And he had James, the brother of John, put to death with a sword. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. When he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him to four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out before the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but prayer for him was being made fervently by the church of God. On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and guards in front of the door watching over the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared, and a light shone in the cell, and he struck Peter's side and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly, and his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Gird yourself, and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you, and follow me. And he went out and continued to follow, and he did not know that, he was, that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and second guard, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened for them by itself, and they went out and went along one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. When Peter came to himself, he said, Now I know for sure that the Lord has sent his forth his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod from all that the Jewish people were expecting. And when he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, who was also called Mark, where many were gathering together, gathered together and were praying. Uh, when he knocked at the door of the gate, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer when she recognized Peter's voice, because of her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter was standing in front of the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so. They kept saying, it is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had led him out of the prison. And he said, report these things to James and the brethren. And he left and went to another place. Now, when the day came, there were no small disturbances among the soldiers as to what could have become of Peter. When Herod had searched for him and had not found him, he examined the guard and ordered that he be led away to execution. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and was spending the time, spending time there. So there are several things here. This is a, such an interesting um, juxtaposition, a kind of connection here of both things that are actually really, I mean, funny uh, and also very serious. Um, one of the things that's interesting, I'm, I'm a... I've been kind of out of the practice, but I'm, I'm a, a little bit of a, of a film buff. I like movies and all the rest. And one of the things I know is uh, kind of the holy grail for a lot of filmmakers is to be able to make a movie that is both a horror movie and also a comedy. And to the point where the, the goal is to have the horror parts, when the movie's scary, it's genuinely scary. And when it's funny, it's genuinely funny. And a lot of times when movie makers try to do that, they tend to have... Uh, one or the other, not both, or they tend to get to some kind of lukewarm middle. And there are some exceptions to that rule, but it's this idea of keeping the serious and the lighthearted all together. But we see this here. And so I want to talk, so it, the, the, the seriousness stuff is the beginning and the end. And the, the thing at the beginning that's serious is that James, the brother of John, James, the son of Zebedee, uh, is going to, it was executed by the sword. You know, this is the same James who, when he and his brother, they talked to Jesus and they said, uh, make it be for us that we are at the right and left hand, right at your right and left hand when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says, will you, will you drink the cup that I drink? Will you be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? And they said, yes, we will. And he says, you will be baptized the way I was. And what he means here is that this is, this is James fulfilling this prophecy, that James was killed because of this. Um, and then we also have at the very end, uh, Peter being rescued, Peter, Peter being delivered, necessarily carried with it the fact that these uh, guards and these soldiers we're going to be executed. This is one of the things that we see, we'll see later on when Paul and Silas are in prison. Uh, we will see that, uh, that Paul and Silas, when the, when the chains fall off them, they tell these guards not to, um, to, to do themselves injury because they hadn't left yet. And this implication is because if, if they had let these people escape, they also would be killed. Um, we're going to see very different perspectives on how 
um, jail breaks and, and how the potential of prisoners escaping are handled a couple different ways throughout this uh, book. But it's important to realize the fact that, um, well, you know, I don't know, did, 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 did Peter and other folks know that, that these other people would be put in danger? Uh, would that have made a difference? I don't know. It's, it is a complicated factor. It's like, I remember when I read the book of Judges for the first time, and I found myself being struck by, there are stories in the book of Judges that sound in their kind of setup like other stories that we've heard, but they have very different endings, uh, usually much more tragic endings. You know, there's a story that begins, it almost seems like it's setting up another miraculous deliverance like we have with Abraham and Isaac, Isaac nearly being sacrificed. And it doesn't end with the child being delivered. Uh, there's a few other stories like that where things seem to set up. You know, there's a story of uh, where, um, you know, the story of, of, of uh, uh, Lot and his family being delivered from Sodom. And you have this sense in which, oh, these people are going to be delivered instead, and, and they're not. And so we had this kind of uh, expectation that uh, sometimes, you know, that those two sets of stories together make it seem as though sometimes there's a certain kind of deliverance and sometimes there's not. In the same way, uh, we have this idea that uh, later on, we're going to read about Paul and Silas and we're going to read about somebody who is about, you know, thinks he's in trouble because of a jailbreak and it turns out that there's a radical deliverance and we don't have that in this passage. But I want to focus also on the lighthearted thing. Um, there's, a, there's a hymn by Charles Wesley called And Can It Be That I Should Gain, and it's a beautiful, beautiful song. Um, people have told me over and over again how difficult it is to sing, and so we don't tend to sing it very often, uh, but it's just marvelous. And it, and it tells a story uh, as if you know, told from the pers- point of view of a believer um, and being delivered and experiencing the deliverance of God, and it definitely parallels uh, a verse or two of the, the song or the hymn. Uh, it's definitely parallel for this. But I... I I get kick out two things in particular just, that struck me as being very funny. One of them is the angel of the Lord suddenly appears and a light shone in the cell and he struck Peter aside and woke him up. So it's, it's funny because, you know, we don't get the sense that he hears that the light woke Peter up. We don't get the sense that he was tapped on the shoulder. I mean, the angel shows up and kind of kicks him in the side or, you know, smacks him and says, get up, it's time to go. And I just find that unbelievably funny uh, given the seriousness of the situation. Also, Peter doesn't realize what's happening here. He doesn't think this, he thinks he's having a dream. You know, he thinks that it's, it's like, oh, maybe this is a story, a way God is speaking to me in the midst of my imprisonment, not realizing that actually he's being delivered. So, which is funny because that also means that you could be in the middle of being delivered by the Lord and not even realize it until it's already done. But then he goes to, to the house uh, of Mary, the mother of, of Mark, of John Mark, and, um, and he goes, and this, this government girl, Rhoda, is so excited, she just leaves him there. You know, she runs in to celebrate with everybody else, and he's like, hey, I'm still here, and just keeps knocking. And, and so it is funny to me, because it would be, there are, and we, we talked about this at various points with the stories of Jesus and all the rest, and there are sometimes people who want to make it seem as though the early Christians were in, intensely gullible people. You know, tell them any story, no matter how outlandish, and they'll believe it. You know, after all, they believe that Jesus came back from the dead. They believe that a virgin, you know, conceived and gave birth to a son. And, and yet, it does seem that these people behave in similar ways. Where they're like, no, you, you've got to be crazy. We've been praying. They were praying for Peter's deliverance. And then he was delivered. And they realized that was a thing. You know, and I, I got to be honest, if I was praying for something as unlikely as that, and it happened right away at that point, or you know, even after a month of, of praying, or however long it was, um, some period of time, you know, I'd be a little bit surprised too, uh, in spite of the fact that theologically I should know better. Um, but it's a reminder, once again, that um, these people were not gullible. They were not naive. Uh, they knew exactly the, the situation they were in. They, they prayed because they had nothing else to do. Um, and, and yet God heard their prayer and responded in a way that, that surprised them in that moment. So it's a reminder of just, just all the, the, the good news and how God moves in the midst of things and all the complexities and all the difficulties of life. And it was so easy for us today to say, well, God shouldn't have done this because of the life that, we're, that could have been lost. We might even say that Peter should not have gone along with this if he knew about the, the life that would have been lost. Peter uh, might not have known about that. So we don't, there's a lot of questions we don't have answers to, but what we do see here as part of the larger tapestry is that God responds to the people in a variety of ways, and we cannot simply assume that similar beginnings lead to similar ends, but that we should be open at every moment to what God is doing in our midst. Well, that's all for today. Come back again tomorrow. We'll have more of the book of, the book of Acts. Have a good day.